and we're ready to get it on. Lance Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside and set to go again, David. Oh, the opening match today, we're going to have the King in here. He will be going against the Golden Terror. Interesting match. Don't yeah. know too much about the Golden Terror, but we'll find out in a few minutes. Also, Big Bubba and Goliath will be Bubba. in here again as a tag team. Downtown Bruno will be in their corner. We will have Jeff Jarrett and Billy Travis teamed up today in a tag team match. Rock and roll RPMs will be going against the team of Tracy Smothers and John Paul. That should Ought be a fine one. Andy, yeah. And then eight-man tag team action coming up a little bit later on today in the expiration of time action. That always provides for wild, unpredictable action going everywhere and all over the studio. We'll be looking for that. Take time out right here. Going to be back, and we'll have Jerry the King Lawler coming in here in just a moment. <laughs> of our opening bout, it will be Jerry Lawler going against the Golden Terror. We've got lots more action coming up here, and obviously the King has arrived. David? This is going to be a one-fall, ten-minute time limit match. Golden Terror already in the ring. He weighs in at about 218 out of parts unknown. And the King, you know, in Memphis, Tennessee, 232 pounds, Jerry Lawler. This match, one-fall, ten-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun's the referee. One fall, ten minutes in time, and we're about to get it underway here. We do have that big eight-man match that will be coming up a little later on. Jerry, uh, we're usually seeing him putting the strap down. This time he was putting That's it right. up. We got him before he got a little bit ready there, and we're off and running with the opening bow. Golden Terror finds himself back in the corner. The referee is right there. He wants him out of the corner, off the ropes. Jerry obliges. He feels him out of the corner with that body drag. Popped him across the ring. Golden Terror. Up on his feet. He was walking around the ring. Better be careful. He had Lawler behind him. You don't want to turn your back on the king. Lawler got him with the right hand. Golden Terror went right into the boot. I am free that this is not going to be the most hotly contested battle we've ever seen with Jerry. Uh, I think you're probably right. <laughs> Crowd hollering, we want the mask. Ooh, upper arm by the King. Lawler just totally dominating the match. Down is one, two. I believe that's over. it. Minute 12 seconds of time on it, and it was all Jerry Lawler. Now Lawler is going for the mask there. The crowd wanted the mask off. Jerry's going to try to do it, but Golden Terror rolls out of the ring. Jerry decides that. It's kind of unusual for Jerry to start off quick, too, but today he did. The Golden Terror just did not uh, offer up anything in the resistance on it. Lawler just beat him flat, one, two, three, and that's all there was to it. So the opening bout goes to the King, one, two, three, over the Golden Terror. A couple of interesting matches that I wanted to show some highlights of, Dave. One of them uh, had to do with Tommy Wildfire Rich. Uh, going against the international heavyweight champion, Big Bubba. Let's take a look at just a minute of the highlights of that bout. Tommy Rich shooting away, and he puts Bubba down on the mat again. He had a couple of pin attempts at him. Kind of one, two, and Big Bubba just barely bucked him out of there. up with a drop kick. Bubba holds on and Tommy hits the mat hard. And Bubba staggering around fired Tommy and he hit the referee. Bubba misses as he came down with a splash. Frank Morrell still on the deck. Tommy moving up to the second rope as Bubba comes up in the air. With that press, downtown Bruno up, clubs in. Bubba rolls over as the referee, and here comes Lawler. Jerry Lawler jumped in, and at 12:20. 
The referee rings the bell, and I think they're going to disqualify Rich. That's it. 12 minutes. Yeah, the, the obviously downtown jumped in there. He had a chain on his hand is what he did when he nailed Rich. Lawler came in to, he saw exactly what happened in there. Bubba was about to get a one, two, three. He stopped that. He's going to tell the referee, and the referee says that's all disqualification. And Big Bubba was the winner in that match uh, over uh, Tommy Rich on a disqualification. Kind of an unfortunate thing the way it went. Another match, and you'll see there's kind of a thread here. I want you to pay attention to this one too because Jerry the King Lawler went against the great Kabuki. Now let's take a look at some highlights from this match. Oh, shot to the midsection. Lawler going with the elbow as Kabuki and Lawler trade lick. There comes the scrap and the crowd responds. up on the step signaling saying come on come on come on Billy Travis waiting on Goto Tony Burton the former ninja Jeff Jarrett and Travis Tracy Smothers as they're keeping him out of the ring and Lawler pounding away on Kabuki referee Jerry Calhoun's down floor, Tommy Rich hollering to the referee, come here, come here. Oh, I didn't even see it, Lawler's down. Evidently, Kabuki slammed his head against Rich's one, two, three, and that's going to be it. Seven minutes and 15 seconds, the winner of the great Kabuki, seven It's, it still is a mystery to me, uh, uh, Dave, exactly what happened in there. Uh, Jeff and, and Billy Travis and Tracy Smothers and Tommy Rich were all down there. To be certain that uh, Tojo didn't, as he ended up calling, have some of his guys jump in the ring. Now, that's what happened the last time that Kabuki and Lawler met in there. So they were out there. We have had a lot of conversation. I didn't see it. I was watching the action in the crowd in there. Some of the people at ringside told me that Rich hit him with his elbow. I couldn't see it on the tape. I couldn't tell from that either. Yeah. No, I... And uh, so, anyhow, I don't know exactly what happened on it. Tommy Rich had some comments to make about it. Let's listen to Tommy. You know, Monday night in Memphis, uh a few things happened that was really strange, you know. Uh, Eddie Marlin, I talked to him about a shot at the world heavyweight title, and he said that he'd signed Lawler. Well, I don't know if Lawler's insecure or thinks he's washed up in wrestling or what the deal is, but I had an international title shot against Big Bubba, and I'm sure all you people seen it. And uh, what happens, you know, Mr. Insecure himself, or, uh, you know, he comes down to the ring. I got Big Bubba going, got him pinned, climbed up on the second rope, hit him with the Thez press. He was down for the count. Bruno comes in and hits me in the back of the head and Big Bubba rolls over on me. Well, who takes it upon herself to run down in my match? The King, Jerry Lawler, wants to run down. And I don't know if it was a conspiracy on your part, Lawler, if you just, you knew that if I beat him, Eddie Marlin would have to think about maybe giving Tommy Rich the title shot because if I had the international title, I would be the man next in line. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's what the deal was or, or what you've got in your mind, Lawler, if you think you're really washed up or not. And then I come down, Lawler, he, he cries the blues again. He's scared to jabs. He's going to run in and help Kabuki. 
And so uh, what happens, the referee gets knocked down. I jumped up on the apron to see if Lawler was okay. I turned my head because here come the jazz. And being the clumsy clutch you are, run right into the back of me and knock me off to the apron. And, uh, you know, I just don't understand, Lawler. I, you know, I, and I think I should be the man to have a shot at the world heavyweight title. Nick Bockwinkle has it. You know, I beat Harley Race three or four years ago. I beat him for the world heavyweight title right there in Atlanta, Georgia. Lawler? You've wrestled for the title shot 10, 12 times. Have you ever won it? No, you hadn't. You beat Nick Bockwinkle one time. I went through the records. You beat him one time, but I checked. You never walked out with the goal. In Atlanta, Georgia, just like I said, I walked out with the goal. And I think in my heart, with all of my heart, and all them people out there, too, told me, said Tommy Rich ought to have that world heavyweight title shot. And when I didn't get the international title, kind of knocked me out. But I still think that I ought to be the man going after the goal. Memphis, Tennessee, you need a new winner. And I think that I can beat Nick Bockwinkle. Some big action coming up here right here on Championship Wrestling. I'm going to be looking forward to getting back into that because I got to tell you what, an incident comes up in just a few minutes that has never happened before to us on Championship Wrestling. Now, friend, that covers a lot of wrestling programs, but I think you're going to want to stay tuned and see this because this is a son of a gun, something that really took us by surprise, and, of course, we'll be getting to that in just a moment. Uh, I think you know, obviously, that... Um, the action is going to be coming up on January the 7th next in Evansville. That's right. The Coliseum will be on January the 7th. You got it? That's when Championship Wrestling will be hitting Evansville again. Now, Hopkinsville, they've got some coming. If you want to do a little driving, you may live closer down towards Hopkinsville watching this. Friday, January the 2nd at the convention center at the Western Kentucky State Fairgrounds. One of the matches, they got a whale of a card, by the way, coming up down there. One of the matches is going to be an AWA Southern Tag title match. This is going to have Jeff Jarrett and Billy Travis going against the Rock and Roll RPM. Jeff and Billy want to get you in here. Um, I think on the show we had a chance to talk a little bit about it, and you were talking something in regards to the, the two referees for a match uh, with a rock and roll RPM, Jeff. That's right, Lance. You sort of know how this came about. Uh, they came out on TV right there. We were doing an interview, and they came out and goaded us into a match, and we got in the match, and Mike Davis pulled something out of his tights. And, and the he, title was up. I the title was up, that. and we lost the belts in that match, and then uh, we had another return match with them, and the referee came in the ring and counted one, two, three. He counted Billy out. I was the legal man in. And, uh, and in defense of the referee, he had been knocked out of the out. ring. That's right. So there really wasn't, I mean, he was just kind of a little goofy on the He didn't really, that. that's right. He didn't know what was going on. This time we have two referees, and uh, we'll get him. Hope we get the Good luck. I'd like to see that. Okay, we got some action. It'll be in the ring before we get to it, though. We must take time out for the Pittsburgh connection. No, Boy, no, you no. are really bubbling today. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, shut these hillbillies deep stuff. Second of all, I'm sick and tired of hearing you week after week, day after day, time after time, calling it the Pittsburgh connection. It's not the Pittsburgh connection. It's the downtown connection. There is a difference, brother, because I'm not from Shadyside. I'm not from North Hills. I'm from downtown Pittsburgh, baby. Now, let me talk about the Memphis Mice. We're talking about Jerry Bryant and the Brown Clown Mambo Lip Lou Winston. Let me tell you something, guys. Now you know. Now you know what kind of professional wrestler I am. Now you know how bad I am. Now you know how tough I am. And like I said, any time, any way, any place, another match. I want it. I need it. I want you in that ring because I didn't finish the job. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to make you suffer. Now I hear something well, about you, it. You, you have another match that will be uh, around. Yeah, yeah. It'll be the Memphis Vice, Brian and Winston, and a mystery partner. And a mystery partner. See, okay. Now, first of all, first of all, we don't need no mystery. We got the mighty 417-pound Goliath. We got the mighty... 407 pound big Bob, and we got downtown Bruno, 135 pounds of walking, talking, roping, stomping, downtown destruction. <laughs> okay. 
Now, I want to know, hey, I know, I'll tell you, I want to know who this mystery partner is, okay, because we want to know, and I know you have a lot of pull around here, I know you always get your nubby nose into everybody's business, so you tell me who the mystery partner Bruno, is. Bruno, I do not know. Wait, you just stand here and lie to me? Well, hey, people? look, I'm telling you, it says right on here, it says... Memphis Vice yeah, and yeah, Mystery Yeah, Parker. yeah, yeah, that's what it says on there. But you're always getting your nubby nose and everybody else's business. And I know that you're... Hey, tell me the truth. Is it, is it Lawler? Is it Lawler? Is Lawler the Mystery Parker? I don't know. It Wait, what are you standing here and lying to me for? I'm tired of you standing here and lying. Wait a minute. Okay, is it... Who is it? Is it David Razor? Is it David Razor? Is that who it is? Who is it? Wait, wait, wait. How many times do I have to tell you? I do Until you not quit know. lying. Are they bringing some brown clown in from Pittsburgh? I don't. Who is it? Hey. It may be an old. Hey, and if they're using the thumbs of yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, it might be, but I don't know. Hey, who are they bringing in? I don't who know. Who is the mystery partner? It's got you worried. No, it's got me mad because you're standing here lying to me, brother. He's standing here lying to me because we want to know who this mystery partner is so we can train, right? And you're going to stand here and look me in the eye and you're going to lie to me? You're going to lie I'll to me? I tell you, I don't know who it is, Bruno. No, let's not just break. Well, I'm a little bit disgusted. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people. Tracy Smothers, Pat Tanaka, Paul Diamond. These guys are on top, huh? It could guys be like this are a dime a dozen. Guys like this are a dime a dozen. Jeff Jarrett, Billy Travis, guys like this are a nickel a dozen. I could buy 15 of them and 25 more like them if I wanted to. But we don't need no mystery because I'm Dot Tom Bruno and I'm one heck of a wrestler by myself. And these two, these two are so great, I might not even need to get in a ring. Yeah, that might be. The I want to know who this mystery partner is. Man. I don't know. And look, oh, you guys got a match coming up here. You'll face it when you get to it. You lie like a cheap watch. Why don't you go back downtown Pittsburgh? Come on. Uh, will you guys please go to and the... By the way, F-O-R-T-D-U-Q-E-S-N-E, not 42 nothing hillbillies. <laughs> Fort Duquesne downtown. Okay, Dave, let's get at it. All right, it's going to be a one fall, 10-minute time limit tag team match, introducing at a total of 451 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, Ed Maddox, and from Tupelo, Mississippi, Dennis Upton, going against them at 824 pounds. From Atlanta, Georgia, Big Bubba from downtown Pittsburgh in the ring right now. It is Goliath. Downtown Bruno in their corner. No downtown Bruno at our table, unfortunately. I'm seeing this guy in here. What's his name? What's his bronze clown's name? Maddox, something like that. That hey. is Ed Maddox. Seeing him in there makes me wonder what really happened to the money that they raised for USA for Africa. I mean, look at this guy. I'll tell you what. If he had well, white you pay hair. attention and stay if up that guy here had right. white hair. If that guy had white hair, we could use him for a Q-tip. If he wore a metal hat, we could use him for a nail. Look at that guy. He could tread water in a hose. He doesn't belong in a ring. And look at another pathetic excuse for a human being. That makes me wonder where the money went for farm aid. Look at these two clients in there. They got the nerve to get in the ring with my downtown connection. They got the nerve. Look at this guy. He's getting beat so bad. I tell you, he's going to be on the floor looking up, brother. This is disgusting. Now, here comes this other pathetic excuse for a professional wrestler. This man's not a wrestler. This man's a scrub. This man thinks he can come and get an easy payday. Well, he knows he's going to get beat. What he didn't count on is getting humiliated, destroyed, and hurt. Maybe crippled, maybe for life. Look at this guy. He's going to be working in a car wash next week somewhere in Memphis. I don't know. Look at it. Dennis Upton in with uh, Big Bubba. Okay. Well, you know what I feel about Dennis Uptown? Because I'm downtown. Downtown. None of this Uptown garbage. I'm tired of it. Well, you're no more tired of it than we are of you downtown. <laughs> Running that mouth. Dennis Upton. Well, I, the only thing I will say with, with Bruno, and he has nothing to do with it except that he's got them together, is that Ed Maddox and Upton are both outclassed with Big Bubba and Goliath. That's it. One, two, three, Dave. What kind of time do we have? minute 37 seconds 137 big bubba and goliath uh, as expected totally controlling the match and winning it handily in just a little over a minute and a half yowza they did in fact take it take it into camp and now they're helping uh, dennis back boy i'll tell you when you stop and look at the size of somebody like bubba or goliath and just think about them dropping with an elbow or hitting you with a splash in there. Believe me, you can get hurt and get hurt plenty. Okay, the winners, Big Bubba and Goliath, and thus downtown Bruno goes running off. Uh, very happy, I'm sure. I hear the crowd holler, and I don't know why. Here they come. Pardon me, Jerry Bryant. Big Lou Winston, the Memphis Vice. Jerry Lou. How you doing today? <laughs> well, I'm coughing. Got a little cold, but outside of that, in the pink. 
The mystery partner, that's what it's all about today, right? Hey, he's driving me crazy. Will you tell us who the mystery partner is for crying out loud? Bruno is standing out here ready to climb know. my frame. What do you we mean don't you don't know? You no, guys, you're going into a match and you don't know who your partner is going to be? That's what we count out here today for, is find out who our mystery <laughs> partner is going to be. You know what I mean? Let me ask the audience, uh, uh, let me ask y'all a question out there now. How many people out there think they can whoop downtown Bruno, huh? <laughs> is that enough? What's that got to do with I want to ask another question. I want y'all to listen real careful. Real carefully, I want y'all to listen to this. How many people out there would like to have the chance to whoop downtown Bruno? Huh? Hey, now wait a minute. I'm getting a glimmer. Yeah. You guys don't know who your partner is and you're asking questions like that? Just in a few short minutes, we're going to find out who our mystery partner will be, right? Okay, what we want to do is make the up and ultimate fool out of downtown Bruno by showing him somebody out here in this audience can beat his brains out. How about that? Yeah. If you guys talk to Eddie Marlin about this, huh? we, not, I, we, we, about this we ain't worried about all that. We come out here to pick out a partner to make a fool out of downtown Bruno, and I promise you, somebody out here in this audience is fixing to be the Memphis Lights partner. Let, let me let us go pick out. You're not that, serious yeah. about that. <laughs> Davey, can we switch microphones here and let me uh, borrow you? Yeah, I'm going to walk over here. Really. Hey. 511. 511. I think I'm better off with mine. I'm going back to my microphone. I think it's got a longer cord. 511 pounds. Let me see how far I can get over here. Well, that's all the farther I can go. I can see. Wait a minute. There. Hey! Are you guys? I'm not a chauvinist, but that's a that's a girl. That's a lady. Come on, now. are you serious? Yes, you guys serious. serious? We love it. Look, this is the ultimate. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry, Lou. Let's step around here. We're going to be shooting right across the ring here. What's your name? <laughs> Emily. Wait Emily. a minute. What? what Emily. Is it? Emily Arthur. Emily Arthur. If you know what you did, you put your hand up and said, "I can beat down down Bruno and give me a chance." Emily, I promise you. I promise you this. Big dumb dub, b bun, Dumbo 1 and Dumbo 2 will not touch you. We'll keep. I promise you, nobody. Now, nah, wait a minute. They, 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 All we want you to do is to get your hands on downtown Bruno and, and beat spank him. Brain. Beat his brains out. Yeah. 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 Hey. Emily's going to be our mystery party. No, downtown no, no, Bruno. No, no, no. You better listen. You're to about to get this young lady in trouble, no, Emily, no, with no, all no, due no, respect. Nobody but, will touch Well, you. maybe I'm wrong. Uh, if you got, are you a professional wrestler, Emily? Absolutely not. No, sir. Come on now. Uh, no, huh? absolutely not. Only Have you ever wrestled before? That crowd of wrestlers has been to the matches on TV. Okay. What do you do for for a living? If you're not a professional wrestling, do do are you in, in some related field? Computer operator. Huh? Are you a computer operator? <laughs> you, you guys better check this with Eddie Marlin before you get into that. What's going on here? What's the story here, Lance Russell? I am not really certain, but this lady... Oh, this lady what? Has you been, call that a lady? What are you talking about? She has been fixed. She thinks she can beat you. She thinks she can beat me. And they're going to give her the chance, Bruno. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something, Lance Russell. When I was growing up on 42 Boulevard, brother. I had a lot of ladies working for me, and I had to beat a lot of ladies to keep them in line. And she wouldn't last 10 minutes on 42 Chain Boulevard. And I'll tell you something, I'm going to pertain that square circle to 42 Chain Boulevard if she's really serious, and I will beat her brains out. And I want to tell you something, Eddie Marlin better have a heck of a lot of insurance, because I don't want to be responsible when we bust both our arms, both our legs, and our head. And I didn't mean to spit in your eye, Lance Russell, but the way it is, is she's going to get hurt. She's going to suffer. And these two are going to take her, and they're going to give her the big splash. 
twice, twice, three times. And she's going to be so far into the grind, she's going to be looking up towards the ceiling, and she's going to wonder why she ever messed with Don Tai Brewer and the Don Tai Connection. And she's going to wish she was on Fort Duquesne Boulevard. She goes, at least you can make some money down there. And I'm disgusted. I thought she was, I thought they were getting a little like, disgusted hey, with hey, your hey, 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 hey,
you've got some conversation about the rock and roll RPM that I am interested in. Yeah, Lance, uh, you saw what happened in our last match with him, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, the referee, uh, he got his lights knocked out, got knocked out of the ring. I think he counted out the wrong... Room. And when he got back in the ring, he wasn't really looking around. All he did was just count one, two, three. And uh, he didn't see, I had my man pinned on the other side of the ring. Billy had been fighting in there for 10 or 15 minutes. And I was the legal man in. But this week, Lance, we got two referees. So I don't think we're going to have to worry about any of those problems. And we're going to get those belts back, Lance. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that, Billy. I know that it was, uh, it was well, I could call it like it is. I think they just stolen from you right, right here on television and, and got them. And you guys... Uh, have got every right to have another rematch with you know, them. No, with two referees, Lance, we can't go wrong. We're going to get those belts back where they belong. Okay, Just Billy Travis, Jeff Jarrett, let's see him in the ring now. I can tell you one thing for a fact, as good a young fellas as you have seen in a long, long time. We're ready to go to the ring in action, David. Jeff Jarrett, Billy Travis up in the ring right now. Here comes Boss Winters bringing in Rough and Ready. They are... They winners in. Uh, well, good luck to you there. He says Jeff and Billy on a downhill slide, and it's going to be a piece of cake for Rough and Ready to take them. Rough and Ready out of parts unknown, 424 their total weight. Jeff out of Nashville, Billy Travis, Lexington, Kentucky. They weigh in at 430. This match, one fall, 10-minute time limit, and we are underway. They are underway, and I think they're making a mistake if they confuse that win that Ark and Roll RPM had with being a downhill slide, friend. Yeah, well... Absolutely. I think everybody that saw that certainly agrees. A couple of the finest young wrestlers anywhere. Not just around here. We're talking about Jeff Jarrett and Billy Travis. Jeff in there right now. Out of the rope. Fired across the ring. And set that shoulder as he came off of there. Billy Travis in. Forearm. Ah, body slams him. Travis and Jeff Jarrett put him into the rope. Wow. Down he goes. Count is one. But that's all he gets is a one count. Rough and ready in here is decided underdog despite the confidence, perhaps overconfidence, of boss winners. Jeff Jarrett. Good upper arm. Goes for a cover. Can he hold it for three? Count is at one. Here comes Billy Travis. Billy swings down off the middle rope. Minute 45 seconds gone in this one. by Billy, count one, two, he kicks out of it, it's two count. Jeff with the upper arm, puts him down to the mat, here's a cover again, count is one, two, and no, looked like he had a three count, but he didn't get it, just a count of two. Billy Travis will be coming back in after the tag, I tell you at this point about the most that can be said for Rough and Ready is that they are still in the match. And we're two and a half minutes into it. They have not made a single offensive move. It has been all Billy Travis and Jeff Jarrett. They control the tempo of the match. Oh, Billy Travis. Spins him around. Now to the mat he goes. Billy with a cover. Count is two. Again, he can't make it stick for a three count. Jarrett in with the right hand. Cover again. Count is one, two, and this time you also he only gets a two count. Thought he had him. That's the second time. It looked like he had set up pretty well for a three count. Jeff 
Jeff and Billy tagging in and out frequently. Mark of a good tag team. Keep the fresh man in there as much as possible. Billy using the rope, springs down there. This time he doesn't try to go for the cover. Rough and ready to break and cover several times in a match. Billy tags Jeff. Jeff comes in, drops down to the upper arm. Snap over. Down is one, two. Left shoulder came up off the mat, stopped the count there. We're four minutes, five seconds into this one. Oh, what a drop kick. Boy, that. Oh, snap that neck back. Down to three. That did it. Boy, he's got a bit of great drop kick. Well, friend, if you have any doubt, let me tell you, he can flat lay a drop kick out there. A beautiful move with Jeff Jarrett. Nails him with a drop kick, uh, and they came away with a relatively easy win, I think, over Rough and Ready. Four minutes, 15 seconds the time on it, and uh, it's Jeff Jarrett and Billy Travis controlling it and winning. Time out. Be back with more action. We've still got that eight man, and that'll be coming up later. Tracy's mother is John Paul coming out as they will be involved in the next bit of action. And this ought to be a dandy right here. Rock and roll RPM, Mike Davis and Tommy Lane. Show, I think we got a goodie coming up. John Paul stripped down. Boy, he's a well-built young man. So is Tracy. Both of them big. Good height, David. Yeah, especially Tracy. Tracy very tall. And that uh, that's good. He's able to make use of that in many matches. A couple of guys right here. One of them uh, pretty tall. The guy uh, is on the right right there. That would be Mike Davis, Tommy Lane, his partner, out of Atlanta, Georgia, the Rock and Roll RPMs. Tracy Smothers out of Springfield, Tennessee. John Paul out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tracy and John Paul weigh in at a total of 454, and so do the Rock and Roll RPMs. Would be a very good one. This is a non-title match, by the way. The uh, Southern Tag Team belts being handed out of the ring by the Rock and Roll RPMs. Jerry Calhoun, the referee, has sounded the bell, and here we go. Tracy Smothers against Tommy Lane. Tommy Lane slamming the shoulder into the midsection of Tracy's mother. Tracy whips on a reverse, drives him in. Body slams him, hip toss, and hooks that arm, takes him right over with that snap arm roll. Rolls him back up. He gets the uh, left shoulder down, but the right shoulder was far. The referee gave him a count from our angle. It looked like his right shoulder was up. Makes no never mind. There was only one of them, and they got to come in bunches, like three at least. Ooh. Popping away with that right fist. Tommy Lane, look at this. Nice move. Tracy Smothers. Hope up, uh, the uh, Rock and Roll RPMs don't take Tracy and John Paul lightly. Uh, they, rock and Roll RPMs tend to be a team that since uh, if they are wearing the belts, they uh, come in there thinking they're unbeatable and that uh, they're so much better than everybody else. They overlook Tracy and John Paul. They're going to find themselves in trouble here today, let me tell you. That's okay. Yeah, I, could, that's I could sit here and watch that. Right, wouldn't it? Come to think of it. <laughs> Mike Good Davis point. over on the ropes. He wanted a break, and that's a way to get it, and he got it. Tracy Smothers backs away. Yeah, I think some of the crowd, when they're rooting for a particular wrestler, in this case, a lot of folks root for Tracy and John Paul. Uh, I think when, when they see somebody make what is a good move, and that is get over and use the ropes to break it up, they boo them, and, and they don't particularly care for it. But uh, it is a very slick move. Mike Davis trying to reversal. Tracy tried the same thing, lost the hold, ends up in a headlock, but now he powers out of it. Great move by Tracy as he forces Mike Davis down to the mat. There's a tag on Minneapolis's John Paul. Ooh, that had to hurt. Yeah, with Tracy still holding yeah. on. <laughs> Look out. Ooh, 
Ooh, that hurt too. John Paul's head into the turnbuckle, top rope. Tommy Lane in now. They double team as they make the exchange. Tommy Lane, the shorter of the rock and roll RPMs, but he's just as tough and vicious as the other, Mike Davis. Lane, oh, with a body slam on John Paul. Mike taking the tag. He comes back in from behind and nails John Paul. Pulls him out of the corner. Crotches him, fires him in the air, and a big body slam that follows once again. Davis backed away enough to take the steam out of that midsection shot by John Paul. Powerful new left he used on it. Tommy Lane whipped. This is the right. Oh, nice clothesline. Ron Paul needs to get to the corner now. He does, gets the tag, and here comes Tracy Smothers over the top rope. After both of them. First Tommy Lane, now Mike Davis. John Paul back in to help. All four of them in the ring. Tracy working on... Tommy Lane, oh look out, here comes Boy Tony. Yeah, Boy Tony over there, and he just nailed Tracy Smothers with that first. Hit him one, two, three, and the rock and roll RPM. We saw you come running in there, and I don't give me any of that stuff. Came in there and hit Tracy Smothers. Lance Russell, you talk about me being a loser, I'm a winner, I win all my matches right now. There's your loser. That boy lost right here in the middle of the ring. I beat him last week right here. He's nothing but a loser. Yeah, what you've done is, uh, what you've done is ended up causing him to get beat in there. There's no question about that. Hey, he came running in, hit him with a purse. There's nothing hey, funny about man. that. Wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you something, Lance Russell. This man here is a winner. You got people like John Paul and Tracy Smothers. These are losers. These. Wait, 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 watch it. These are losers. <laughs> That's what's up. Boy Tony didn't do nothing. Now, I got a few things I want to say about Boy Tony here. But first of all, you know, I just want to make a few comments about what I've been seeing going on here today. You know, I'm very happy to see my good friends and neighbors, the Rock and Roll RPS with the Tag Team Championship. You know, a lot of tag teams right here. There's Rough and Ready. Of course, I can never tell them apart, you know. But now then, enough of that. Let me talk about Boy Tony here. This man is a real man. This man is a tough man. This man is one of the number one, if not the number one professional wrestler in the business today, in the sport today. Now let me talk about something. We got a back alley street brawl That's with true. Tracy Smothers, okay? I'm going to tell you something, Tracy Smothers. This man here is not only beautiful, not only talented, but the clothes that he wears, not only into the square circle and out here to talk to Lancer, but walking up and down the street and everywhere he goes was given to him by Boy George, the lead singer from Culture Club, baby. Do you really want to hurt me? You know who I'm talking about. Well, these, like, this right here is worth five grand alone. This right here, this is one of his cheaper outfits, you know, sort of for bumming around. When this guy gets all New York up, baby, hey, hey, hey! Ooh, there goes Boy Tony out of there, and... Hey, just come right in here, Tracy. He's out here talking about all of that, trying to make a big deal out of the fact you lost a match in there. You, you hit him, he got, he hit you with that purse. Sorry, last week it was that hairspray he sprayed in my eyes. This week is that purse. I don't know what you got in that purse, but it's not Avon. I don't care what you got. I know I got a back alley street brawl coming up, brother. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm tearing your clothes off and I'm stripping you butt naked. Not butt naked. And I'm going to show all these people all over that you ain't a man, brother. And, and I'm going further than that. I'm going further than that. When I strip you naked, I'm going to beat you senseless. And I'm going to whip your butt like your mama should have done a long time ago when you turned into a fag. Okay, we got to go. Uh, we'll take time out. We'll be back. Back in 
to championship wrestling with more of that big action coming up in just a moment. Did you get it? January the 7th. That's Wednesday night. Returns to the Evansville Coliseum. Championship wrestling will be there. I'm going to call in uh, a downtown Bruno and his large charges in here uh, yeah, to yeah, discuss yeah, the yeah. incident that took place mm -hmm. on this championship wrestling the folks are watching right now. Yeah, it looks I, I like that uh, they're close to having that all set up for Evansville so that Whoa. the... Hey, let me tell you well, something, well, Lance well, Russell. What? Well, 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 well. Let me tell you something. When they said something about a mystery player, I thought maybe they were going to have somebody huge, you know, somebody solid like uh, Tracy Smothers or Pat Tanaka, somebody like that. When they come out here and say it's going to be some broad, first of all, I'm not happy about that because they're trying to make a fool out of me. Uh, that's second the of idea. All, yeah, that's the idea. Well, second of all, it's going to be me that makes a fool out of them and that broad when I beat the living heck out of her and leave her laying her in the dirt. But, 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 I don't want to get sued. I don't want to have my money tied up in court for the next six months when I beat up some broads. I heard about men wrestling was getting in trouble years ago for beating up lady wrestlers. Uh -huh. And she's not even a wrestler. I want to talk to that well, goofball Eddie Marlin right now and make yeah. sure... Eddie, hey, get Eddie. him out of here. I know he's out Come here. Come on, Eddie. Hey, 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 hey. Concerned What's my that? problem? I don't want to get sued. I don't want to go to court. I don't want to go to jail. Hey, don't tell me what to do. She better sign some papers or do something because I'm not... already signed here. Let me see. Let me see that. Don't have a bit about it. He's The girl's going to come out here and whip your fanny, right? No, this girl's not going to do anything to me. I am Dieter Burrow. I'm not some wimp. My idea of a wimp is not myself. I'm going to beat this girl. Eddie Marlin, I don't know what he he's thinking about, but there's no hey, way he's right, brother. Let me no ask way. You something. Did, you hear, did you hear the answer from the studio when they said, how oh. many people do you think in here can beat downtown Bruno? Everybody in the place and for eight Lance Russell, around. who cares about the studio? That's a bunch of hillbilly redneck geeks. I'm not concerned about the studio. I'm concerned about these two men and myself and the Memphis Mice and that little broad. <laughs> well, it's all in the future. We'll see it all coming up. Eight-man tag match coming up here, and we're going to be in there. If we get them out, let's go, or else head to the ring, because we're running out of time. we got to get out of here. Okay. Don Bass, Buddy Wayne coming out here right now. Yeah. You thought you got rid of me, huh? Well, I wouldn't find me a great partner right here. Buddy Wayne, baby. A legend in his own time, huh? Yeah, Lance, I've started back wrestling. I've got the shape. I've trained. I've lost about 45 pounds. So let's get in that ring and see let's what we can do. Okay, Tojo. Good shot. I hear that uh, Paul Dunn said that uh, he wants uh, to go through oh, that uh, no, such thing as I quit match. But I think I quit. Japanese will never say I quit match. I don't know whether he can say I quit or not, but boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> He can say a lot of other things. I did recognize Diamond. Okay, Dave, let's uh, get the introductions here, buddy. All right, this match is going to be an eight-man tag team match. Goes to the expiration of time. And Tarzan Goto, Buddy Wayne, Don Bass, and Boy Tony with Tojo Yamamoto in their corner. Coming in on the other side of the ring, it is the Memphis Vice, Big Lou with Jerry Bryant, Paul Diamond, and Pat Tanaka. Eight-man tag team rules are in effect. Referee Jerry Calhoun explaining that. Uh, looks like Buddy Wayne is going to be starting over here on this side of the ring. On the other side, who will it be? Paul Diamond from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Hey, Diamond starting out against Buddy Wayne. Buddy, who has not been in the ring in quite some time. He is quite a seasoned veteran. He and Don Bass both. Uh, start out teaming up together on Paul Diamond. Don, at about 300 pounds. Buddy Wayne comes in at about 255. Tarzan Goto doesn't weigh that much, but boy, he's powerful. Let me tell you, look at him and Diamond going at each other. Got him with a drop kick. Buddy Wayne nailed it from behind. Everybody from the other side of the ring jumped in there. Now, look out. Eight men going at it, ring. Dave. Eight men in there and a referee in the middle. And will we ever get it sorted out here? Look out. Paul Diamond threw it over the top rope. That's a disqualification. The referee was watching it. Kojo Yamamoto with a kendo stick. 
Yamamoto beaten away on Paul Diamond with that kendo stick in there. Disqualification as Diamond was thrown over the top rope. Diamond and Goto. Well, they're going after it down here on the floor. The match is over. Disqualification when Paul was thrown over the top rope. There's Lou Winston and Pat Tanaka, Jerry Bryant, trying to help Paul to get him back out of the uh, out of the clutches of Tarzan Goto. There they go. The winners of the match are going to be Lou Winston, Jerry Bryant, Pat Tanaka, and Paul Diamond. Boy, that son of a gun started out, Dave, and within less than almost a minute, they were all eight at it. Yeah, now, one one minute. Sooner or later, we usually see that, but not that quick. They really were going at each Ooh. other in there. So it was uh, the team of the Vice with Diamond and Tanaka with a victory in there. We're going to take time out. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I'm sorry, time uh, went a little bit longer. We would have loved to have had Don Bass left his cigar butt on here. <laughs> oh, well, uh, they ended up on the short end of that particular one, right? They did, in fact. It was uh, the team of Goto, Wayne Bass, and Boy Tony losing to Memphis Vice, Paul Diamond, and Pat Tanaka. Son of a gun, we just don't have the time to be uh, reviewing all of them, but we'll see them next week. Good holidays to you from everybody at Championship Wrestling. Till we see you next week for Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye.